Felicity Kane, the operations and growth manager for Kepler Interactive, the publisher for the upcoming Flintlock. The Siege of Dawn game is raging over the game being added to the Sweet Baby Inc. boycott list and the company's uh, DEI actions being exposed by Mark Kern, former World of Warcraft team lead. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. This is over at thatparkplace.com. Wrote this up this morning. And uh, if you watch my other video on Flintlock, we are going to be going over some of this stuff uh, just to provide context for new viewers. So if you've already seen this and you want to just kind of move on, skip ahead later on in the video. But Flintlock, Dawn of the Siege, or Siege of the Dawn, it was added to the Sweet Baby Inc. boycott list by Cabrutus Rambo. He posted this on X. Hey guys, I added another game to my curator list. The game is called Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. And as shown in this physical copy of the Edge magazine, it involves Kim Belair, Sweet Baby Inc. CEO. I've waited a bit before deciding to add this one because a dev from Flintlock team reached, at, reached, to me, reached out to me through my mail stating that they eradicated the Sweet Baby Inc. part and basically remade it completely. At this point, together with my staff, I've decided to give them the chance to prove this, allowing us access to the game pre-release and asking their manager to have a conversation with me. They openly refused on both points, leaving me without any way to confirm what they were telling uh, telling to us. This doesn't speak very well about them. So yeah, now game. Uh, new, so yeah, new game in the list. And obviously, he has a screenshot from Edge Magazine where it confirms that Sweet Baby Inc. was involved with it. Uh, mentions Kim Bel Air. Not only does it mention that, but it has. Uh, the uh, chief operating officer, Andrea Tops Harjo, and all of her DEI initiatives that she was injecting into the game as well. So not only does it have feature Sweet Baby Inc., but uh, the, the chief operating officer, uh, Andrea Tops Harjo for A44 Games, was putting this in there as well. And she's the one who hired uh, Sweet Baby Inc. So following that, we got this uh, report from uh, Mark Kern, who goes by Grums on X. He is the former World of Warcraft team lead, and he posted this. Uh, Proof Sweet Baby Inc. ruins games. Sweet Baby Inc. game Flintlock by A44 Games has been overrun by Woke. I used to work there. Flintlock was a good project with lots of potential. Then it was ruined. So he's citing an inside source who claims to have worked with uh, worked on, um, on uh, Flintlock seemingly at A44 Games. Kern continues saying, before I go further, please note this is rumor from a source that seems very knowledgeable about the studio's inner workings. Take that as it is. If others would like to verify, please DM me anonymously. The CEO and COO at A44 are no longer with the company, but the damage seems to have been done. The good devs at A44, I tell you how to fix it at the end of this thread. Did you know the protagonist of Flintlock used to be white when COO and casting director Andrea Tops Harjo would join the studio? Her first actions were to change the character to hire Sweet Baby Inc. and change the main character to a POC, person of color. This marked the beginnings of the problems with the game studio. Uh, he then shared more details about Harjo and how she was allegedly using A44 Games assets to fund her own business. Uh, he wrote this, Andrea Tops Harjo is rumored to have used the company's funds and manpower to power her personal agenda and projects on initiatives not related to the game or even the studio itself. One such initiative that I found is Inclusion FX, a VFX company, an advocacy company with Shades of Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, he then shares a screenshot of the bio from the company. She held this position at Flintlock at the same time she ran Inclusion FX. I asked and confirmed his source tells him, yeah, I have witnessed our UI artists making art assets for its websites for its website as their sprint tasks. Uh, and I, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, Kim Belair did an interview with Inclusion Effects where she admits that she wants to take over the video game industry through woke DEI hiring. So, uh, interesting connection there as well. Uh, Kern continues saying, aside from working with Sweet Baby Inc. and making changes to the game, Audrea also directed numerous changes in HR in her role as Chief Operating Officer. In 2021, most developers were denied raises and evaluations were postponed for at least six months. Audrey had told HR to inform anyone who complained or asked questions that the reasons is, is because I said so. She also ordered the HR department to hide the salaries of the top executives of the company. HR tried to help, but were unable to get past this. The team was worried about the studio finances. Meanwhile, the new hires and changes uh, to the game resulted in a project where, quote, these people know nothing about how a video game is made. So obviously accusing Sweet Baby Inc. and the new people who came in of not knowing how to make the games coming from uh, Kern's inside source 
uh, who appears to have worked at A44 Games. And then he posted this. Uh, After nearly two years of these DEI changes at A44, the damage had been done. At this point, the studio was purchased for $175 million, an an unusually high sum for a small studio, by the way, by Kepler Interactive in September of 2021, a gaming collective fund whose founder also founded the uh, Callum Knights Gaming Fund. It was at this point that Audrey, the COO, left the company. Perhaps this was the start of a cleanup of the game's troubles. Uh, He then concluded saying the state of the game is unknown at this time, but is believed to be in shambles after this two-year round of DEI changes. As we now know, A44 reached out to Cabrutus to refute SBI's involvement, saying they are no longer involved and all their changes reversed. But when Cabrutus asked for proof, they refused to speak to him any further. And uh, it seems like, based on what we see here, that uh, they lied to Cabrutus Rambo and the DEI stuff and the Sweet Baby Ink stuff is still embedded in the game. Because after Kern's thread, Lissy Kane who, as I noted, is the operations and growth manager for Kepler Interactive, the company that is publishing, at least according to the game's Steam website, publishing uh, Flintlock. She wrote this, absolutely fuming, vibrating off the effing plane of reality. This piss-weak pseudo-journalism that the far-right Gamergate are taking is so vile. Incredible to see in real time and closer to home how wrong uh, Grums is and how damaging he and his weird troop are. So these people, or at least Lissy Kane, is absolutely panicking, super pissed that the game has been added to the boycott list and that their DEI initiatives have been exposed by Mark Kern absolutely in panic mode. They know that this game is now dead on arrival since it has been added to the boycott list. And they know this because there are now over... Last I checked, over 304,000 people that are participating or following the Steam Curator list, which is, uh, in effect, a boycott list. And we've already seen the damage done to other games that Sweet Baby Inc. has been involved in. Big releases such as Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. We have confirmation that that game did not meet expectations uh, for Warner Brothers. Uh, That came from Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff, as well as their chief financial officer. Mark Kern has speculated that they've lost over $100 million on that game. We've also seen reports from Remedy, a financial report from Remedy Entertainment, that Alan Wake 2 has not met uh, its um, investment. It has not broken even yet. They confirmed that in their most recent financial report, where they also revealed that their fourth quarter finances declined by around 25% from the previous year. Not only that, uh, that's when Alan Wake 2 released. So they had a 25% decline in revenue while they had a major release. And they've only sold uh, officially 1.3 million copies. They said they sold 1 million copies by the end of December. So it's about two months because it, it released at the end of October. So you have November and December. And then uh, in January, it only sold about 300,000 copies because they said by the beginning of February, it had only sold 1.3 million total. And my guess is that those sales or that trajectory is probably going to uh, not continue upwards. It's probably going to uh, plateau off given the fact that that game is now part of Uh, is now associated with Sweet Baby Inc. I know it's not part of the uh, boycott list on Steam because it's not available on Steam, but uh, people are very well aware that that is a Sweet Baby Inc. uh, uh, game. So uh, there's a reason why Lissy K is super pissed, and it's because uh, she's probably going to lose her job, and this game is going to probably end up costing uh, A44 games uh, a lot of money. They're going to lose a lot of money on this game. Uh, now that it is being boycotted. Uh, so uh, not only did Kern share this, because uh, Lissy K immediately protected her account, uh, but he also shared a number of screenshots from her website, uh, which confirms that she is the co-founder of an organization called um, Geek Girl Academy, I think. Not only that, but uh, uh, she's claiming on her website that she is a victim of harassment. Uh, he shares a screenshot of it here. She says, Uh, This is literally all you can see on her website now. It says, in preservation mode due to targeted online harassment, if you want to reach out, please use regular channels. If you're experiencing online harassment, please review Take This's amazing uh, resource here. If you remember, Take This is the government-funded, Department of Homeland Security-funded organization that uh, defended Sweet Baby Inc. earlier this month. Interesting how all of these people are connected. Uh, But 
Uh, Lizzie Kay, uh, her website revealed before she kind of uh, took it down that she is the co-founder of this organization called Girl Geek Academy. And you can just guess what this organization does. They discriminate against men in order to try and elevate women into tech positions. This is what the uh, this is what it states on its website that that the organization's goal is. It says to bring one million women and girls into technology careers by 2030 through a range of programs and in industries such as games, startups, 3D printing, design, and aviation. We work to tackle structural issues facing women and girls in technology by influencing families, corporations, government, schools, and the tech community. So you're probably wondering what are those structural issues? Well, those structural issues are the fact that. Women are not interested in joining tech jobs. Their About Us section says this. We started building programs for women after we ran the world's first all-women hackathon in 2014. We, qu we quickly realized if we had started teaching children 10 years ago, we could, bring, we could be hiring them today. So now our programs teach women, girls, and families across a range of different industries, including games, startups, 3D printing, um, making design, tech, drones, space, and aviation. I guess it's supposed to be making design. I don't know. They have a comma there. Doesn't That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's supposed to be 3D printing, making, and design. I don't know. T terrible grammar. Maybe they should have learned some English, too. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, they go on and say, the. furthermore, the site claims that since women are not naturally interested in technology jobs, there was some kind of structural problem. This is what I was talking about. This is the structural problem. Gender in inequality ain't going to fix itself. We were shocked. We thought, wait. If no one has done this very basic thing to support women, what about the hard stuff? Who's working on that? And that's when we realized if no one else was working on these structural problems, we had a responsibility to try and tackle them. So they're, what they're calling a structural problem is that women have chosen not to go into these tech fields and they see that as a problem and they need to fix that because they're claiming that that is gender inequality. You literally can't make this stuff up. I mean, these people just lie. They literally create problems so that they can try and solve them so they can enrich themselves. That's the whole point of this organization. It is a complete and utter sham and fraud. Nevertheless, it continues, says, we know from our experience, volunteer effort alone wasn't going to fix the structural issues facing women and girls in technology. We decided to build a company that could influence families, big corporate, uh, big corporations. I think that's supposed to be big corporates. I don't know. What, that's not even a word. Government, schools, and the tech community to work towards achieving gender equality in tech. We also decided if we want women to build their own tech companies, we need to understand and role model what the journey looks like. So here we are, and it's serious business. Obviously, she's clearly leveraged this as a part of her video game uh, job at Kepler Interactive. But you can see this is the person who's really pissed off. Uh, they're connected to take this or they're sharing take this stuff. They have obviously pushed DEI in their game and they are connected with uh, DEI initiatives through this Geek Girls Academy website that she runs. So they're clearly profiting off of discrimination. Then they're trying to influence governments to allow them to discriminate more because they've created this fake uh, problem that there are somehow a disparity between or there's the, the disparity between men and women in tech jobs is somehow a problem, even though it probably has to do with the fact that uh, men are more just more interested and in maybe suited towards that. And women are not interested in that and are doing other things that they want to do uh, with their lives, maybe uh, starting families. Uh, instead of going into a tech job or, uh, I don't know, they're being nurses and things like that. Um, so it's just utterly, uh, ridiculous, uh, but not surprising that, uh, these people that are running these basically, uh, discriminatory organizations are trying to put their discriminatory, uh, behavior and beliefs into these video games. And now they're going to pay the piper and, uh, you, you saw you saw the post there. She was fuming and she's really pissed because uh, she has been exposed for her discrimination and trying to inject that into the video game Flintlock. But let me know what you guys make of uh, Lissy here getting super pissed uh, about being 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 her actions being exposed to a wider audience. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth.